anti-vaccine sentiment among parents is gaining momentum, and doctors say their resistance was fueled in part by misinformation during the COVID pandemic. Meantime, some families are now showing increasing reluctance towards routine vaccinations for their children, including parents of kindergartners. According to the CDC, 94% of kids in that group received mandatory school vaccinations last year. That's down about one percentage point from the year before. And the agency is now reporting a surge in cases of chicken pox and measles in some regions. For more on this, I want to bring in Dr. Shannon Dillon. She's a primary care pediatrician at Riley Children's Health in Indianapolis. Thanks for being here, doctor. We really need to get to the bottom of this. Have you noticed this anti-vaccine trend in your own practice? Absolutely. We've, we've seen parents have hesitancy about vaccines for many reasons uh, for several years, but it does seem like lower access to be able to talk with your primary care doctor during the course of the pandemic has certainly made the situation worse. And what are you telling parents who are reluctant or maybe they're just refusing to get their children vaccinated? This is a conversation we have frequently and we really feel as pediatricians that this is one of the most important things that we can do for your children uh, in helping protect them against these diseases. Uh, things like measles caused deaths of millions of children worldwide before the vaccine was available. And these are very safe vaccines. The measles vaccine has been available since 1963 and has really had to be changed very little since that time. So we have decades worth of data showing how safe they are. And uh, it's something that if you have questions about, you should feel comfortable talking to your child's regular doctor. Is it disheartening at all as a doctor who is providing care for children for so, and you know, like you just said, that this is this has been safe for so long. Is it disheartening? Well, you know, I think most people who have concerns about vaccines really are, are trying to do what they think is right. Uh, and there's a lot of misinformation uh, available on the infer internet uh, on many topics, but vaccines are certainly one of them. Um, so I think this is one of the reasons that it's important to have a trusted relationship with a primary care doctor for yourself and for your children so uh, that we can have the opportunity to educate you on these things. Because most people aren't doing this out of ill will or malice. Uh, they're doing what they really feel is the right thing for their child because they have concerns. And so we welcome the opportunity to have conversations so we can provide the education since most people haven't seen these diseases in the U.S. anymore. We've had vaccines for uh, chicken pox since the 1990s, and like I said, measles since the 1960s. So luckily, many parents don't remember what these diseases look like, but we in medicine have had the opportunities to see the breakthrough cases. And so we can provide a little bit of counterbalance because yes, there's a risk with vaccination as with any medication that we give, but there are real risks to not vaccinating as well. Does this pose, a, you know, people not getting the vaccinations for their children, does it pose a risk for children who are vaccinated, doctor? In many cases, no. Vaccines uh, like measles, for instance, is approximately 97% effective after you've had two doses, although there is that 3% of people who won't respond to the vaccine for whatever reason. Uh, the real risk are for people who are either too young to be vaccinated or because of illnesses where they might be on drugs that suppress their immune system that they can't be vaccinated for some reason. So generally speaking, if you've been vaccinated, in most cases, you're safe. Uh, but there are always certain people who can't be vaccinated. And when they tend to cluster together, then those diseases can spread very quickly. Got it. So there was a surge in measles cases in 2019, and it was most, mostly among unvaccinated people. So how do cases now compare to back then? And do you think we're on track for maybe a similarly sized outbreak? Uh, it, it looks much the same at this point. In general, out of all of the outbreaks we've seen over the last 10 years or so, they've really all clustered in unvaccinated people. Um, it's hard to say what this one is going to do at this point because it seems like it's early on. The 2019 outbreak was one of the biggest outbreaks we had had since measles vac rates dropped uh, in the United States since it had been declared eradicated in 2000. Uh, so hopefully this one won't get that big, but uh, anytime that you have a cluster of unvaccinated people who tend to uh, associate with each other, there's always the chance it will spread very quickly. Well, we really appreciate what you do, Dr. Shannon Dillon, and thanks for coming on and really informing people because we need to know. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you.